build us up and enable us to go on without being controlled and ruled by fear. Thank you. The name of Jesus overcomes that fear. So we thank you and pray that you will speak to us and encourage us. Amen. Please take your seats. Wow. Now let me just tell you something. Fear is frightening. I've heard many of the songs we've been singing, many of the things people have said. They've been talking about the name of Jesus overcoming fear. We need to bring the name of Jesus into everything that we do. But I, normally I'd tell you a joke, but I want to just tell you a little story. So there's this rock, you know, a stone, a rock. And he decided to overcome his greatest fear. And so he did, and he moved in, and he became a little bolder. <laughs> That's as good as they get. <laughs> but fear, we're full of it. We've actually been taught to be fearful. It's been put into our lives by our governments, by society, by the media, we've been, had fear promoted in our lives. And the reasoning for it, I suspect, was very good. The reasoning for it was to protect us. But unfortunately, even though things have calmed down, and if you listen to the news, they barely mention coronavirus anymore. They barely mention it, but people are still got that spirit of fear in their lives. Fear has come, and it's dwelling in people's lives. And it's dwelling in Christians' lives as well. And it might not just be over coronavirus. It may be over a multitude of different things. But society has given names to lots of different fears. I'll give you, give you some before we read the scripture. Hyperinflation. So we know that inflation's coming, but it's been given a name, and people are struggling with the fear of rising prices. When I was a kid, I was a little bit afraid of the dark. Now I'm afraid of putting the lights on because of the cost of electricity. <laughs> Coronaphobia, the one I've just talked about. It's actually been given a name, and some people are terrified by it. Coronaphobia. Traumaphobia, the fear of war. Wow, it affected me. The other day I heard that, well, the other day, it's a few weeks ago now, that a cruise missile from the Ukrainians had landed on the Polish border just in Ukraine, as it turns out. And so uh, suddenly it comes to me, oh, if it lands in Poland, what could happen then? And so, all the time, fears are rising within our lives. Here's another one. Thanatophobia. That's the fear of death. That's the fear of dying. Who wants to die? Don't vote. <laughs> Most of us don't want to die. Actually, God put that in us to protect us. But that fear, that grip that death can have on people rises within them and they have a terror. As Christians, we shouldn't be like that. That's still, I'm still fearful of death. because of the change, but it's the opportunity to move into something new and better that has to get on top of that fear that I've got. There's another one, you won't believe this one, panophobia, the fear of everything. Everything frightens people. So we are attacked on all sides 
with fear. Now, how would we deal with it? Laura just talked about the name of Jesus over everything. It's totally true. Sometimes in the midst of our fear, we can't see the answer to fear, who is Jesus. But it's easy to say, and sometimes not quite so easy to do. But rather than rambling, let's read the scripture. I don't know whether you can see it up there, but I'll read it to you. This is John 20. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Peace, he speaks over his disciples. After this, he showed them his hands and his side and his disciples were overjoyed. So joy came in and replaced the fear. Again, Jesus said to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they're not forgiven. God, fill us with your spirit when the spirit of fear tries to take over. Let us be full of your spirit and let us speak out the name of Jesus. So this thinking raises many questions in our lives, but I've just thought about three here. So where does fear come from? Acts 9.31, then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged them by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. I see the Holy Spirit popping up in this time, but even in a time of peace, peace, fear can rise within people. We need to have the fear of God. Our world is full of a multitude that have no fear of God. When I was a youngster, I didn't fear God at all. In fact, I used his name as blasphemy. I had no fear of of God because God didn't exist. Let me tell you, God exists. And we need to have a healthy respect and fear of the Lord. We do need to have fear. And so we're told to fear God in many scriptures. 1 Peter 2, 17 says, show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God and honor the king. Wow, there's a command. Love your brothers and sisters. Have a healthy respect for God and love. The Greek word, interestingly there, is phobiomaya. Can you recognize it? It's that phobia. It's that same, same word that's used there. It's translated in other verses as reverence. That we have a reverence and respect of the Lord. And that will control our actions. See, there's no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. But the one who fears is not made perfect in love. Thank you, God, that you're willing to deal with fear so that we are not afraid of being punished because we are respecting and following you. Yes, many do not fear God. Do you fear God? Do you fear God? Not a terrified fear that God's going to get me, but that healthy respect of the Lord because he's worthy of that we need to learn God, uh, learn, need to love God, and we need to learn that more and more in everything that we do. We need to be learning that the love of God drives out fear. Fear of God, therefore, is recognizing who he is and the power he has, and yet still loving him. The power that God has and yet still having a great love and respect for him. 
Psalm 34, verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. So in the midst of human fear, we need to have that healthy respect, that fearful respect of God, and he will protect us. But another place that it comes from is the devil. And I've just put in brackets there to remind me, sin. And one of the devil's characteristics is he's a liar. Get this into your mind. He wants to lie and speak lies into your life that will control you and pull you down. He wants to speak lies that will generate more and more fear in your life. And that spirit of fear that's in society is fed by lies. I'm not talking of coronavirus, but many of the things that we see are fed by lies. He's a liar. And he'll speak lies into your life to help to control you and bring you to a point of fear which makes you unable to serve God fully. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. And you've heard a thousand sermons probably preached about this. If you've been in the church any length of time, I've heard many, many sermons about putting on the armor of God. And so the devil wants to get you in a spirit of fear, but make sure you put on the helmet of salvation that protects your mind. Because most of these fears are in our minds. And God wants to control us by giving us his spirit who will lead us into a better way. The enemy wants to get you into a state of fear. The last one in those three points is circumstances and situations. And we face things on a regular basis, things that come into our lives that suddenly that panic comes, that fear rises within you. Do you think Jesus was ever fearful? I think he was. Obviously, no, he wasn't tested in all the ways of me. And the Mount of Olives, it, it's, he was there and he says, God, I think a spirit, the enemy was trying to speak fear. Oh, how God's forgotten you. And so what does Jesus say? I'm summing it up. This is the Mike Broad version. I don't want to go to the cross. It's terrible. But more importantly than that, your will and your way are more important. I'm going to go your way, God. And so he dealt with that very quickly and very powerful. And then you know what happened? An angel came. An angel came and strengthened him and built him up and prepared for the worst ordeal any man has faced. Why? Because he was the sinless, spot of, spotless son of God who suddenly had to have your filthy sin laid on him. My sin laid on him. And yet he did it. He went. And the fears that you're facing, at times we have to say, God, come and support me. Send an angel if necessary so I can go through this. I don't like it. I don't like what I'm facing. I don't like it. But I'll get through with your help and your strength. There is just another one. The things that people say to you. Now, who's not affected? Who doesn't? Kay dressed me this morning. <laughs> so if you've got any complaints about the way I look, blame Kay. Because <laughs> I got dressed on my own. And she said something like, you're not going to church looking like that. <laughs> and obviously, my fear of K <laughs> drove me to change. But often, people, what people say to you, are you worried about what people say to you? Or what people think about you? Oh, people don't, you know, don't like me. People don't think. And that, rise, that fear begins to rise. So I had to get changed. 
But seriously, people speak things into your life that are designed to put you down, put you in your place, help you to recognize you're nothing and not worth much. And putting us down, we suddenly are struggling then to achieve the plans and purposes that God's got for us. The fear of man, says this in Proverbs 29, the fear of man will prove to be a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So when they speak things over you that are designed to put you down, that would naturally, fear would rise, speak the name of Jesus over them. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit so I'm not controlled by the fear of man. I'm controlled by the fear of the Lord. I'm going to do your will. It's far more important than what those negative things that are being spoken to you. Jesus wants to speak this into our lives. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord. And at times... I've missed seeing it. I'm you. And situations become bigger than God. God help us that we might recognize you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You're above everything and everyone. All those who are trying to hurt me, you're above them. And I have a secure, eternal future. But we need to look at our fears. We need to look at what type of fear is it? What is this fear? What's the fear of chainsaws called, Caleb? Anyone? What's the fear of chainsaws called? Common sense. Because <laughs> they are very dangerous. We've got to look at what type of fear we've got. Is our fear rational or is our fear irrational? Is our fear based on things that can hurt chainsaws? If you don't treat them with respect and have a healthy respect for them, using the same translation as the things we should have of God, they will chop your hand off. Running out in the road, get onto the A9 and just saunter across. And the cars are doing 70 miles an hour. Should we have a healthy fear of getting knocked over? Yes, you should. It's totally rational. But those are good fears. And it's using that same word fear when really it's, again, that respect. We need to recognize what our fear is, whether our fear is rational or irrational. Now, I've told, I've told this story. I may have told it here in case I don't tell that story again, but I'm going to anyway. Because <laughs> I was once talking to, I used to do school assemblies, a high school. And there's 600 kids there, and I'm doing the school assembly and teaching them Christian principles. And so this came up, rational fears and irrational and so I got this rubber cockroach. It was about that big and it looked real. Anyone ever seen a cockroach? <laughs> this rubber cockroach. And so I'm talking to these kids and trying to teach them that the Lord will enable you to deal with your fears. And so I said to the kids, and the prefects were sitting behind me on the platform. I said to them, anyone are scared of spiders? Well, you know what kids do? Well, perhaps you don't. But in school assembly, when you ask that in a secondary school, nobody puts the hand up. Never. Because they'll be the odd. But this little girl, bless her cotton socks, was a prefect behind me. How this happened, I don't know. But... She was a little blonde-haired, lovely girl, and she put her hand up and said, come here then. So she came out and I said, are you scared of that? All 
something broke loose. She absolutely was petrified and screamed and cried. Thought, what have I done here? And all the kids uh, now, it's a great laugh, isn't it? And so I tried to calm her down. Thought, I'm not doing school assemblies anymore. <laughs> and so as I'm going down, the deputy head teacher was in our church. And as I walked down, going through all these kids, at the end of the assembly, and she walked past, she said to me, when a mum phones, I'm giving her your number. <laughs> but is your fear rational or irrational? Thinking about some of the situations that we face now, we've got to, is this, am I being stupid about this? Because I showed the kids the rubber, rubber cockroach and pulled his legs off. It was irrational, but it was real to her. And many times the irrational fears are real to us. They will hurt us. When actually irrational fears won't hurt you. Rational fears will. Here's another picture. I'm on a cliff. On the edge. And there's no... There's just this drop hundreds of feet. Or if you're into meters... 50 meters drop and you go right to the edge now some people are so used to climbing I go right to the edge there and by the way Kay will be screaming that much you'll hear it should I have a rational fear about what's in front of me yes I should because if I step over I'm falling to a certain death however if there's a strong railing there, so it's been protected, a strong railing, I can go and I can go and look over the railing. Because now my fear has turned from being irrational, sorry, being rational to being irrational. Because now I'm protected, I'm safe. God wants to wrap his arms around you so you're not afraid of falling over the cliff. So that he deals with those irrational fears and speaks into our life, peace, be still. And so deciding what your fear is, whether it's rational or irrational. Now, if you've got cockroaches in the house, by the way, be afraid they're going to spread disease. That's rational. What being scared of a rubber cockroach isn't. And so we need to be working out in our life, is, in our lives, is this fear rational or irrational? So what we're going to do about fear? And you've already heard the answer. You know what the answer is. Just got to decide what's the right question. So what we're going to do about it. I would say, your fears, be they rational or irrational, face them head on. Face them head on. Look at them and say, right, I've got you, I'm putting you in the right place. If it's irrational, it might need a change of the way that you think. I'll give you another little smile but it's actually true when we were kids tea came in a packet not in a tea bag and you mix the tea in the teapot and it was tea leaves anybody understand what I'm talking about remember it don't put your hand up remember those kids <laughs> but I love drinking tea and we'd have those strainers which sort of half worked but when I got to the bottom of the teacup, I wouldn't drink the bottom. Why? Because I was afraid those tea leaves were going to get into my mouth and it was horrible. And so I wouldn't, dr wouldn't drink all the tea. Maybe you were different. Maybe you enjoyed the tea leaves. I called it tea leafophobia. 
But the funny thing is, and I'm, I've made it into a joke, that has followed me all my life. I'm having a cup of coffee. I never used to drink the bottom bit. Cup of tea, I'll come to your house, you make a lovely cup of tea, and I wouldn't drink the bottom. Well, the last couple of weeks, I've been decided to face this irrational fear head on. And so, I am drinking all the tea. So the teacup is dry at the bottom. The coffee cup is dry. I thought, this is crazy. There's no tea leaves anymore. It's, I have, since I started that, I had a tea leaf that bursts. Because <laughs> in the midst of dealing and heading with your fears head on, something will come to reinforce that fear in your life. Nearly always does. Problems and situations that you've been fearful about will come and hit you head on. Remember that your fears are just shadows. Psalm 23 verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's just a shadow. Even though I'm walking through it, it's just a shadow because it's, for Christians, it's moving on into that new wonderful arena that God has for you. And so we have to recognize it's a shadow. Anyone ever been hurt by a shadow? They don't hurt you, do they? The shadow of a baseball bat. Lisa, does this? And so here's the shadow. So I go like that and the shadow hits you on the head. Again, being silly. But it's true. Many of our fears are just shadows. They can't hurt you. They won't affect you. We need to learn to walk in a new way. And recognizing many of these fears are shadows. A shadow can't hurt you. Even though we're walking through that valley of the shadow of death. Death is not a f something that we should fear and should be terrified by, trying to live for every second. God's got a plan for me and for you, and the enemy can't stop that plan coming to pass. Don't be terrified of the things that God is leading you into because of great and wonderful things will happen. We need to let peace reign and rule in our lives. Particularly thinking about some of the terrible things that people are facing now. And I couldn't mention Ukraine. Do you know today is VE Day? Victory in Europe. Maybe it was a little bit premature. But that in itself can terrify so many people. Matthew 6, 34 says this, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You all know the story, the disciples are in the boat, and they're with Jesus, but they don't recognize him there. He's gone asleep. And sometimes we live our lives like that, that God's gone asleep in the midst of this terrible situation I'm facing. Jesus had gone asleep, but the Spirit of God was still there. The human Jesus had gone asleep, but God doesn't sleep. God doesn't sleep and doesn't leave you in your situation. Jesus afterwards explained to them, all that was needed was to trust him. The name of Jesus is above the storm that's going on in life. And so, I guess, I need to shut up, but we need to apply this. Here's something that I dug out off the internet. Ukraine's President Zelensky, this is what he said to the Russians early on. He said, it's your faces that you will see, not our backs. He was saying, we're going 
head on into this. It's, your, it's your, our faces that you will see, not our backs. The, those that are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive doesn't make you slaves again, that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption into sonship. And by him we can cry, Abba, Father. We've got to speak the name of Jesus so that we don't live in fear again. That we can rise up and see that God is in control. He's not lost control. But really, it's easy to say, speak the name of Jesus over it. Believe in God. It's easy to say that at times. It's not quite that easy to do. But sometimes we need to speak to ourselves. Talk to yourself and say, hold up a minute here. And remind yourself that God is your Lord, your Savior, and protector. That is, however, if you're a follower of Jesus, you can start to deal with your fears. If you're not, if you're not a follower of Jesus, you've never committed your life to him, then you've got a lot to be frightened about. You've got a lot to be fearful about. So if you're listening to this online or every one of us here, if we aren't in the Lord's family and going on with him, be frightened. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to be frightened about. You need to do something to act and face your fear head on so that God can bring you deliverance and God can bring you peace and accept you into his family. So, just thinking of rounding it off, I'm going, going to pray again. But I'm going to pray in sort of two prayers for those that are followers of Jesus, that we won't be controlled by fear, but we'll be led by the Lord and speak the name of Jesus over our fears. And if you're not a Christian, then... I'm going to pray that this will be a great opportunity for you to make that commitment that will help you to start dealing with your fears. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you recognize how weak and sometimes how fearful we are. We thank you that we are determined to recognize that you're in the boat with us that you are there and your spirit never leaves us and he never forsakes us, he's there with us. Help us to see him over and above our fears. Speak into each one of our lives, I pray. And for those that don't really have a relationship with you, anyone here or anyone online, you haven't got a relationship with Jesus, there's a way to deal with the fear of dying and eternity and that way is to let Jesus Christ come into your life and forgive you and fill you and place his spirit within you so that you become an overcomer that your sins are forgiven and you can have peace with God if you've never done that then ask someone to help you or pray a prayer like this God, I know that you're there. I can feel it inside me. Will you help me and I give my life to you and ask you, will you forgive me and cleanse me so that I may, this fear may be dealt with and I can have a secure future and home with you. Forgive my sins and help me to move on with you. I pray that in the name of Jesus. And for all of us, face your fears head on. Move into them. But if somebody's got something they really are terrified about, they need help, I'm sure the team here will pray with you. Anyone wants to give me a wave? Something really is absolutely 
terrifying you at the moment. And you just need, you can't deal with it yourself. You just need help to move through. Give me a wave. So thank you, Father, that no one here has got any fears that they're struggling with and the fear that they're over that the fears are overcoming them thank you for that but if you have speak to somebody because God wants to help you thank you